Okay, we're moving on to module 36. And the topics in the module are for exponential functions. So here, this topic, it says table for an exponential function. And the function they gave us is 3 to the power x. So this is something a little bit different than what we've seen before. We've always seen the base as x and then the power as 3. But now it's kind of going in the reverse. So, um, we need to uh, create this table here. So if I'm doing this, let's evaluate this function with each of these numbers. So I'm gonna replace the x value with each of these numbers. Okay, and then you can use your calculator um, 3 raised to the negative 1 is actually the fraction 1 third, which makes sense because the power 3 to the 1 will go downstairs. 3 raised to the 0 should just be 1. 3 raised to the 1 should just be 3. 3 squared should, of course, be 9. And then 3 cubed should be 27. So you fill in the chart with these numbers. And that's all they're asking you to do here. Now what they're asking you to do is to take it one step further and actually take that table and then graph it. So I'm going to use those same values as they did before. 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And let's see what we get. So let's put them in. 2 raised to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 raised to the 0 is 1, 2 raised to the 1 is 2, 2 raised to the 2 is 4, and 2 raised to the 3 is 8. And so if I draw that, you end up with negative 1 and a half, 0 and 1, 1 and 2, 2 and 4 and if I had graph paper I would go up as high as 8 so I would also have the point 3 and 8 which is somewhere way up here it's like way up here okay but you notice that the graph is going upward in that way and then the graph is also going to trail off toward the x-axis because there is a horizontal asymptote for these things at y equals zero okay this value will never be zero no matter what exponent you give it because if i start going further into the negatives let's see what we get um two two raised to the negative two it's just a smaller fraction now you've got a quarter two raised to the negative three now you've got an eighth, two raised to the negative 32. Now it's some really, really, really tiny decimal. You've got like nine zeros in front of this point. Zero, 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 two, three, eight, two, eight, right? So it's just getting smaller and smaller, but never, ever, ever going to get to zero. So that's why there's an asymptote here, okay? So for exponentials, you know the y value will never be zero. So you should have an asymptote there. This topic is similar. Draw the five points and draw um, the asymptote. So we're going to create our chart again. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And see what we get. So I'm going to program my calculator. First, I'm going to do x store, or sorry, negative 1 stores x. And then I'm going to say 2 parentheses fraction 5 over 4, close the parentheses and raise it to the power x. And I get 8 fifths, which is what you'll type in Alex, but just so that I know about where that is, I'm going to change it to a decimal. That is exactly 1.6. Now 0 stores x. Okay, zero stored is x now. 
We're gonna go back and plug it in. And we get two. Then one store X and plug it in. We get five halves, which is also the same as 2.5. Then two store X and go back and plug it in. Oops, that's not what I wanted. 25 over 8 and if I change that to a decimal 3.125 3 store X plug it in and we get 125 over 32 okay we get this value okay so let's draw this. So we have negative one. Negative one and 1.6. It's about right here. Zero and two. One and 2.5. 2 and 3.125 and then 3 and almost 9. So it does curve. It's just really hard to see that curvature. But there's no um, vertical shifting, no shifting upward or downward, which is going to affect my horizontal asymptote. So it does still eventually trail off getting closer closer and closer to zero. So my horizontal asymptote does not change. The only time it's going to change is if I actually add or subtract the number here, then that will shift the vertical asymptote up, I mean horizontal asymptote up, or it'll shift the horizontal asymptote down. Let's try the next topic. Graphing this. So we're going to do the same thing as we did before. Creating our table, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and plugging this in. So again, I'm going to use my calculator's graphing. So negative one, store x, and I'm going to type negative parentheses fraction five over four, close, raise to the negative x. This needs to look exactly like it does on your paper. And I get negative five fourths. But for me to graph that is negative 1.25, 0 stores x. I get negative 1, 1 stores x. I get negative 4 fifths, which equals negative 0 0.8, I believe. Yep. And then 2 store x is negative 16 over 25 which is negative 0.64 and then 3 store x I get negative 64 over 125 which is negative 0.512 okay now you will have to use the button and the calculator to type in the coordinates in order to graph it for me I actually have to physically graph it in order for you to see it so negative 1 1 2 3 one, two, three, although I don't think I'm gonna need to go that far. One, two, three. So negative one and negative one and a quarter. Um, zero and negative one. One and negative point eight. Two and negative point six four. Three and negative point five two, and so on and so forth. So it does have a curvature, but notice that it's going this way, and there is no shifting here. So that horizontal asymptote should still be on the x-axis, which means this still will trail off toward that. And then this is obviously going downward, so it'll go in that manner. I can know my curves are a little bit sketchy, but I'm trying my best to make it pretty. Once you plot your five points, the um, you click on the graphing button and Alex will just graph it perfectly.
curvy and everything. Um, for me, I'm not so perfect, right? I am human, so it's not looking really, really pretty. You get the idea. Make the table, plot the points, make sure you plot your horizontal asymptote, and then hit the graph button. So same thing for all of these. It's just more examples, but they're exactly the same method. So plug in negative one, zero, one, two, three. Same thing here. Negative one, zero, one, two. So let's see, negative one, store X, and then we're gonna program our calculator to do this. Okay, so we get negative two, zero store X. We get negative one. One store X, we get negative one half. Two store X, we get negative one fourth. Three store X, we get negative one eighth. And so then you plot Again, notice there's no number being added or subtracted here. So my horizontal asymptote will still be at zero, the x-axis, and we plot. So I'm gonna make this one just so I can see better when I'm trying to graph it. Otherwise, all the dots are gonna be really close to each other. So, One, two, three, four. that's negative one, and that's negative two. So you've got negative one and negative two, which goes this way, zero and negative one, which is here, one and negative half, which is there, two and negative fourth, which is here, and three and negative one eighth, which is there. So you do see that it's trailing off toward your asymptote. And then you see here that it's just going in that direction, right? So again, you draw the dots, you draw the asymptote and Alex, it'll draw the curve for you once you hit the graphing button. Here we're gonna do this one. So if I plug that in, if I plug it in the calculator, it's gonna end up giving me two. If I plug zero in the calculator, it's going to give me one. If I plug one in the calculator, it's gonna give me one half. Two is gonna give me one fourth. And then three is gonna give me one eighth. So now I'm going to plot this function. So this is two and this is one. So I get negative one and two. I get zero and one, one and a half, two and a fourth, three and an eighth. And so again, no vertical shifting, no plus or minus here, so my asymptote is still on the x-axis. And so then that means my curve is going to go like that. And then over here, it's just going to go upward. And it's done. Now here's where they start translating things, okay? So you've just got to take consideration the translations again. Now, there we go. Let me make sure that my camera here, it's looking a little blurry. There we go, much better. Okay. So here, this is going to be a vertical shift, which means that instead of having the asymptote at zero, it's now going to be at, it's going to be at negative three. Okay. Not only that is this dot here is going to shift downward as well. One, two, three units. The whole graph is going to shift downward. And this is actually going to make it shift to the left one. So it's going to the left one unit and down three units. Now for the asymptote, it's going infinitely to the left and to the right. So if I shift it to the left one, it doesn't matter. It's still a line going in both directions. 
but for that point, if I shift it down three and then over one, I actually end up here. And that's all you need. All you need to do to translate it is you're gonna have to grab the function and move it. And so I would grab that point, slide it down three and slide it over and then it should graph this for you, okay? But remember, what's outside the basic function is going to be the up or down motion and it's exactly as it is. Down is negative, up is positive. When you're adding or subtracting within the basic uh, uh, function, so when I add or subtract to this exponent, that's what's gonna move it left or right, and it does the opposite. If it's plus, it goes left, and if it's minus, it goes to the right. Okay, finding the domain and range from the graph of an exponential function. So it says, find the domain and range of the graph, write your answers as equalities. So remember, domain is for x. So the, dom the x values here go from negative infinity to the left, and then they go all the way to the right forever, just slowly to the right forever. So that means I would be typing here all reals for the domain. For the range, the range goes down to negative infinity, but then the highest it goes is to this value here, which is negative two, but it never touches that asymptote, so it's a parenthesis around that. How do you write this as an inequality? Well, first of all, we're talking about range, so it should be a y value, and we're talking about this negative two. And since I'm talking about negative two and below, it should be less than negative two. And since this is a parentheses, do not put a bracket here. It should stay as a um, strict inequality. Now here we have the graph, domain, and range of the exponential function. So one thing we need to know about the domain of an exponential function, it's going to be negative infinity to infinity. The range depends on which way it's facing, whether it's going upward like this or whether it's going downward like that, okay? And that depends on, on the sign in the front. So if your coefficient is positive, it'll go upward. If your coefficient is negative, it's going to go downward. And so that all depends on your range. Your range is either going to be, in this case, is going to be your um, horizontal asymptote value to infinity, or in this case where it's going downward, is going to be negative infinity to that horizontal asymptote. Okay? It depends on which scenario you have. Since I have a negative coefficient, I automatically know that my uh, range is going to be from negative infinity to my horizontal asymptote. And we already know that the domain is going to be negative infinity to infinity. But what is that horizontal asymptote? Originally, it's supposed to be at zero, right? But in this case, you have a plus two which means everything gets shifted up to units. So instead of having that asymptote here, it's now going to be shifted up to units. And instead of having the point zero, 1, which most of them have, right, because when you plug in 0 into an exponential, you get 1 as the answer. Now when I plug in 0 for x, I'm actually going to get a positive 1, coincidentally the same. Okay, now let's plug in another number, like I'm basically doing a table. I plugged in 0 and I got 1. Now I'm going to plug in 1 and see what I get. So I get um, I get 3 halves, which is the same as 1 and a half. So I'm about right there, which means it's going to trail off this way and then go downward that way. So you can see your range goes from negative.
negative infinity up to the horizontal asymptote. And what is my horizontal asymptote? It's a two now because it shifted up two. So there's my domain, there's my range, and this is the graph of the function. Same thing for this one. Make a chart. So if I plug in zero here, I get four minus two, which is two. If I plug in one, I'm sorry, I get one minus two. Four to the zero is one, and one minus two is negative one. When I plug in one, I get four minus two, which is two. So, and this vertical asymptote should, or horizontal asymptote should have shifted down two. So I should have had a horizontal asymptote there. And then if I plot my points, I get that point there. And so you can see it's going to trail here and then go up that way. And so then what is the domain? The domain is always negative infinity to infinity for exponentials. The range is going to be from the y, um, the horizontal asymptote, which is at negative 2, up to positive infinity because it's going upward. Same thing here. I don't have a vertical shift. So my horizontal asymptote is going to stay on top of the x-axis. And if I make my table 0 and 1, 0 will give me 2 to the 1, which is 2, and 1 will give me 2 to the 2, which is 4. So I have 0 and 1, 2, and then 1 and 4. So obviously it's going upward on this side and then it would go downward on that side. And so that's the graph. Now the domain we know is automatically negative infinity to infinity. The range is going to be from the asymptote, which is at zero, goes up to positive infinity. And that's the end of module 36.